actually did that on the tips, uh, yeah. As did Martin Lewis. <laughs> Who knew Martin Lewis? I love it, I love it. Well, you're going to be joining us now, Martin, with your advice. But before we get started, your show is back tonight. That's right, isn't it? It is, and it's a big one tonight. I'm going through how to boost the earnings on your savings. For the first time in the last three years, savings are savings again because the top payers pay more than inflation, so your money will grow in real terms. You can earn up to 8% interest, but most people are earning far less, way less than 2.5%. So how to double, treble, or getting close to quadrupling your interest is the main theme on my show tonight. I'll be taking everybody through it step by step. I'll also be looking at the rise in energy bills that's coming in January. So that's 8 o'clock on ITV tonight. Please do watch it, or at least set the beta max, which was there when about your uh, your tape decks were there, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> Good days. There we go. Good, Good days. days. Uh, that's on ITU and ITVX tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, Martin, loads of our viewers need your advice. First of all, uh, just a quick one for you. Last week it was announced that the energy price cap is going to increase by 5% in January. What does that actually mean for the folks out there? So, well, look, we could take it very simply and say practically for every £100 you're paying on energy now, you're going to be paying £105 in January. The energy price cap is set by the regulator. It dictates the standard tariff that most firms charge. And frankly, while it's called a cap, they're all at the maximum. So they're almost all, unless you're on a fix or a special deal, your price is going to go up. Now, what's actually happening is gas prices are going up 7.7%, electricity 4.6%. So those who have gas and electricity and are higher users, because it's all on the user rate, are going to see a bigger increase than 5%. Those who are electricity only and lower users will see smaller than 5%. As for what you do, well, the first thing is you check whether you're paying the right amount. Go in online and use a direct debit calculator to see if your direct debits are set roughly correctly. Also check how much credit you're in. Right now, at this stage of year, you should be around two months of in credit, two months of direct debit. But energy firms are sitting on £8 billion pounds of our cash right now. And frankly, many people should get it back. So if you've done a metre reading and your direct debit's right, but you're four, five, six, seven, eight months in credit, get in touch with your energy firm, politely ask them to refund you the difference between that and two months' credit. And also, if you're an Eon Next customer or an Octopus customer, they have some good variable tariffs it's worth looking at switching to. There's a company called Fuse out there which is saying it won't put prices up by 5% in January uh, on its electricity-only tariff, so you'll get the current price until March. And people always ask me, is it worth fixing? Um, there are not any fixes out there now that, for me, are cheap enough that I could really say go for it, apart from ones where you need to change all your utility bills or you need to get the boiler cover. So there aren't that many good fixes, though I'll run through step-by-step step, all the different ones on my show tonight. Okay. But that's Thank a broad you. brush of what people should be doing right now. But you're going to pay more. So keep, try and keep your energy usage down. I mean, oh it's... Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's bleak. Thank you very much, Martin. Let's uh, get on to our questions here. Callum says, how can I stop myself from dipping into my savings? I'm trying to save and have a stand in order to send £200 to my savings account every month, but I keep dipping into the account. How can I stop this to make progress on saving? So I presume the question isn't about impulse control and how you stop yourself dipping in. I mean, I would always make sure you've done a budget and make sure you have a certain amount of money to spend and you, whether you do that via a spreadsheet or you do that by taking an amount of cash out to keep your budgeting correct so you know what you've got to spend each week, then that's always a good way to run through. I think you're probably asking me, though, about the savings mechanism. So it, you, saying that has just given me an idea of what you could do. First Direct, the bank, has a linked regular saver account where you can put up to £300 in a month. It pays 7% interest, so it's whopping right now near the very high amounts. If you're not a First Direct customer, it'll pay you 175 quid to switch to it. So you could get £175. You could then get its regular saver fixed at 7% for the next year. You could put up to 300 quid in there, so you're putting 200 quid a month in. And that's a regular saver where you can't withdraw money. You can't take money out. So once it's in, it's in for the year. So if you're looking for a way to enforce the self-discipline on yourself, that would seem a pretty good combination. Free cash, high interest rate, and you can't take cash out. So that's the first direct regular saver that you can only get if you're a first direct current account customer. 
but you get paid 175 quid to switch to First Direct. That is okay. excellent advice. Okay, that's wow, very that's good brilliant. Advice. Um, Bran has been in touch. I want to start taking money from my private pension. I'm turning 60 in December. I want to change my job to part time and start taking some money from my private pension. I've £97,000, quite a few quid in there. What's the best option to take the money out? Well, it depends because the main thing you would be looking at, and I'm presuming you've got a money purchase private pension, is the tax when you withdraw the money. I mean, if, when you withdraw the money, it won't be invested, it won't grow in future. Now, when you get your pension, generally you get a 25% of it is tax free and 75% of it is taxed at whatever tax rate you currently pay or could even push you into the next rate if you take too much. The problem is, so the analogy I use for this, I want everybody to th think of a Swiss roll, right? Think of a Swiss roll. You've got jam swirls and you've got sponge. Mm -hmm. Now, the jam swirls is the amount, the 25% you can take tax free. Right. What you really want to do when you're a low taxpayer is you want to take the tax free bit and not touch the sponge. But if you just take the money out, you actually take a slice. So, a quarter of it will be jam, the rest will be sponge, some of it will be taxed, some of it won't be taxed. To be able to take 25% out tax-free, you, you can take that money out, then you have to put the rest in a product called an income drawdown. But what I don't know from your question is whether you're going to be a higher taxpayer now or a higher taxpayer when you actually get to your pension later so you could save it till then. And the good thing about pensions, though, is there's totally free detailed guidance available, one-on-one -on -one help from Money Helpers Online, which is a, 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 an official organisation. So... I've just given you the ideas of things you should look at, and that's a real caution not just to take your pension money out willy-nilly because you could find yourself paying a lot more tax than you need to. Call Money Helpers Online. Let them ask you all the standard questions that you need. How much do you earn now? How much will you earn in the future? What are you like? And that's, that's the best thing for you to do. So I'm not giving you an answer. I'm giving you an idea of the things you need to look at, telling you where to go. Money Helpers. If, and if, uh, if he's, you can call them up. There's a website. Martin, if he's going to go part-time... Does that mean that his tax rate will drop next year as a part-time worker, so that it would be more favourable tax rate to take the pension out? More favourable tax rate now, but I don't know whether it would be more favourable tax rate than when they're 67 and they stop working in their entirety and therefore right. they should, should save taking the tax cash out till yeah. later or they should take the, the tax out till now. That's, that's my issue. Yeah. That's why I can't... I can't give any further on that. Um, Matt, we, I think I've heard this a lot, actually, on this show. It's quite... A a, a common situation. Mandy said, I want to give my children their inheritance early. If I were to sell my home and give a percentage to each of my children, it works out at about £100,000. What taxes or problems might I face? I'd rather give my children their inheritance whilst I'm still alive. Well, first of all, it's not their inheritance until you pass away, and that may sound trite. But I think there are a lot of people who think the money they've worked hard for in their lives is, is their children's. Ultimately, what, what this question doesn't say, I don't know if you're 51 or 97. Right. right? I don't know how much, how much more of your life you have to live, and you should make sure that you keep yourself a decent standard of living. Where are you going to live if you sell your house? What, you know, what's going to happen? Have you got enough money to pay rent on wherever you would live? Now, look, assuming you're looking to give the money away properly, there are two things that you would look at. The first is inheritance tax. There are lots of things you'd look at. There are two main ones. First is inheritance tax. Now, unless you've got four, five kids, it sounds to me like you wouldn't pay any inheritance tax anyway, so that's irrelevant, because you can give away £375,000 £325, without paying inheritance tax on it. And if you're giving away your house, it's half a million. And if you're giving it to your spouse, then that, that can be passed on, so it turns out to be a million if you're giving your house as well. Go and do some more reading on that. But it sounds to me like inheritance tax isn't the biggest deal to you. But you haven't, if you had two kids, you've got 200 grand. If you've got three, it's 300. If you've got four, then you're over the limit. Right. So I don't know exactly. The other one is care homes. If you were to go into a care home at some stage and it looked like you had deliberately deprived yourself of assets in order that you don't have to pay your care home fees, then they can take that into account and they would look at, you know, making you pay that when they gave you a financial assessment. So those are the two things to look at. But... I mean, my biggest warning, to be honest, is are you sure you should be giving your money, your, giving your children your money when you're alive, money that you need, money you need to live because you're giving them the house you live in? Where are you going to live meantime? Think carefully about that and then look at inheritance tax, probably not an issue, and whether you're depriving yourself of a care home if that's going to be something you'd look at later. 
quite tough to answer without being more specific. We just need you in our life, Martin. Know, Simple as that. Got the answer to it all. Oh, got it all figured out, hasn't he, Martin? Thanks so much. Thank you. There we go. Oh, so you just, it's like I feel like I'm at school. Like I genuinely yeah. learn. <laughs> I need to go into a darkened room after a little bit and try and absorb the <laughs> information because it's all so important. Yeah, isn't yeah, yeah, it? yeah. I mean, it's it really that is. we should all be oh listening goodness, to. Right. Uh, right.